Hi guys, welcome to my channel. <laughs> welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, hit subscribe, give it a like, even give it a share. Leave a comment. Let me know whether you would take part in this for work. Uh, <laughs> no one's gonna fucking go and be like, I am gonna do my tablets <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, hit subscribe, hit like, even give it a share. Show it to one of your friends. Cheers, enjoy. Uh, today I am doing a workout called Murph. It's a CrossFit workout. So it's, uh, it's a mile run, followed by 100 pull-ups. 200 push-ups, 300 squats, finish with a mile run. Uh, I'm going to do it a wee bit different, so the way that I like to do it is you split it up. So still do the mile, mile run first, and then it's 20 rounds of 5 pull-ups, 10 push-ups, 15 squats, 20 rounds of that, and finish with a mile run. No, it's, I love this workout, it's one of my favourite workouts. I think it's brilliant, it's just, it's one, it's just body weight. Every, everything in this workout, body weight, pull ups, squats, running, push ups, it's, um, and it just goes to show, like, with the right structure and the right programming, how you can get an unbelievably difficult, challenging, but really rewarding workout done without even having one single piece of kit, obviously, pull up bar, but I, it shows how much you can get done just with body weight. So, I'm going to do this just because it's, it's, a, it's a mental challenge as well. I'm making it easier for myself by splitting up the reps. But think about like the period like we've just been through, like the lockdown, everyone had to do body weight stuff. If they didn't have equipment at home, everyone was grumbling about that. But actually, you program it right, you get one of the most difficult workouts in the world done without even having one single piece of equipment. So, right, okay, so this is true. So, uh, <gasps> Story time with Dad. <laughs> right, no, sorry, no, so I didn't even know this was a thing. Story time with a wise man called Dan. Right, so I was speaking to one of my clients the other day, right? Did you know, apparently, people have real and then they have fake Instagram accounts or so social media accounts? Yeah, it's accounts. a finster. So I. A finster. Finster. A finster. A finster. Have you never right, heard no, of it? No, I've never heard this before. But basically, right, so she was saying, so her cousin or something, Right, has um, her main real Insta account, which is her like dressed up, going on nights out, uh, nights out, like posing, like doing all this type of stuff for everyone she doesn't know or friends or associates of friends. And then she's got her fake or her what is actually her real Instagram account, Finsta. which is I, which is like for her family, which is her like being stupid and like having a laugh and like having a carry on. And I was just like, isn't that like such a shame? Like, how sad is that? That like, her fake one is actually her real one. And yeah. people feel as if they have to put on this front to be someone who they're not. For people who probably don't even fucking care. Like, they're not even going to, they're not even going to be bothered and it's creating this false image. So, do you know what I mean? I always think as well, like when people are, you know, generally, see when these people like posing and stuff like that, you're not going to, if you see them on a night out, unless they're sitting properly like, posing for pole. They're not going to be like that, are they? You don't like walk up to people like guys and they're just standing there like that. It's fucking stupid. Whereas their real one, which is there for their family and having a laugh and all this type of stuff, like that's what really these people actually like. So I just think, I think it's a shame. In a world full of sheep, why don't you just try and be, not even be different, but then just be yourself. Because then naturally you are different without even trying. So I, that's, that's, my, that's my message of the day. Story time I just, with I just, I, I blew my mind, honestly. <laughs> uh, what would I do? I just, right, get one of me holding these 35s. I'm a fucking animal. What were you saying about Finster? <laughs> 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 Can't get it over. <laughs> <laughs> right, come on, ready? Roll up, set. Roll up, set. 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 <laughs> Roll up. Set. Set nice. Set. You're a beauty, aren't you? Hmm? You've run into daddy.
Hello. Hello. <laughs> like everyone's obviously you you can get so much more done with equipment because you need that um, you, you need that resistance especially for strength training. But what people don't realise is it's like bodyweight stuff. Right, so say for example push-ups, right? What happens? You see when someone says to you, right, I'm gonna start a new fitness regime, right? What, and they're like, I'm gonna do something in the house before I, before I join the gym. What do they do? They'll either go for a run, right? Or they'll do, what's their go-to exercises? Push-ups, Squat. squats, sit-ups, mm -hmm. right? So push-ups are there as this, uh, as this fundamental exercise before people go to the gym. People go to the gym and then see all this fancy equipment everywhere, like bench press and all this type of stuff and stuff. And then they forget, they forget about the, they forget about the push-ups. So you go, you go to the gym and you go around and say, how many of you do push-ups? Hardly anyone will. But the reason that people do them at the start is obviously just because they're well known, but it's because they are one of the best exercises that you can do. And then people forget about them because there's all this other fancy shit going on. But then, I, I, every single one of my clients throughout this period, I've given them push-ups. Every single one. Different variations to work on different muscle groups and then obviously 101 different alternatives just to keep it interesting. So otherwise people will get bored after two weeks. But I guarantee you, when everyone comes back in, the bench press is going to be the same or better and these important lifts are going to be just as strong as they were before, if not better, because of the amount of the uh, Men of push-ups that they've done during lockdown. So people forget about that. It's a really important thing. CrossFit workout, like whatever works for the individual is what they should do. No one should be pigeonholed and be like, oh, you need to do this. The reason I do try and put that training onto my clients is because every single person, I don't care what they say, every single person will have that little bit of competitiveness in them, like deep down, that wee bit like fire in their belly, where when they're introduced to a workout like, like that, if they allow themselves to become immersed in it, they're going to love it and it's going to kick in. And no matter how many times I want to stop there, because I had that set goal, and then I had that other bit of motivation, which is you filming obviously, I know people are going to have that all the time, you're not going to stop. 
You're not, you're gonna, you're not gonna see it till the end. And if you've got that set target, and you know that you're gonna get through it, and you're gonna be fitter or faster or stronger than you were before you did it, I feel as if everyone's got that little bit of competitiveness to, to do workouts like that, but they have to be introduced to it in the right way, and it has to be structured properly. That would, that would never work, obviously, because of the exercises, but it would never work for a beginner. But because of the structure of it, whereas if you tailor it towards the individual and their exact fitness needs, they're going to be able to come away with it and achieve something big that day. And that's why, that's why I give competitive training to my clients. Oh. Aye, so I said it's not, it's not for everyone, so you need to find what works best for everyone, whether that be strength training, whether that be cardio training, whether it be hypertrophy or muscle building training. The biggest challenge is people having preconceptions of what exercise is going to be like. And so that is why I always try and encourage weightlifting to my female clients. Not because I'm going to give them anything they don't want to do, but because 99% of them would never have came to me thinking that that's what they were going to do. Maybe they thought they would have been put on the treadmill for half an hour a session. But as we get into weightlifting, people start to realise they want to be fit and strong. Females, they want to be strong, they want to be fit, they want to be able to lift something heavy rather than being skinny. It's as strong as the new skinny sort of mentality. And to get them in, get them stronger than before, and it empowers them. And they, they want they want to be doing something that they never thought they were going to be able to do. But that is what all my 90% of my female clients they absolutely love heavy weight lifting, whether it's Olympic lifting or just getting a heavy squat or a deadlift, which goes away, it takes away from what everyone thought they would be doing. You've, you've got there. quite a like competitivity between a lot of your girls as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's brilliant. That's, that's the whole point of this gym. We're going to market the gym. Here's a wee pitch for you. So it's, it's like, it's a competitive fitness community, I call it. So everyone knows each other. Everyone will come in and we've got uh, scores on the boards, like heaviest weights and like one rep max and all that type of stuff. And it's never ever for someone to be like, oh, I can't do that or I'm far off that. Everyone who looks at the top one and they're like, oh, I want to get that because they've been taught the association between lifting and health and fitness properly. So it's not, it's not anything that's going to then make them feel shit about themselves. Well, I'll never be able to do that. Every single one looks at it and it's like, that's cool. I want to be able to do that. So I it does, it's got, it's got that, the gym's totally got this wee bit of fun competitiveness. So they're, they're in competition themselves and they've got a wee bit of friendly competition with other people and it works. It works for them. Obviously the best part <laughs> of Dad's gym. Yes. Dad duties calls. I don't know, I have the yeah, mum say, come on. Should squatter. Yes. <laughs> look at like look at the length of her neck. Look at Oh. She's like an eel. Hey. Actually, I'm gonna get a ball. Get a ball Come on. Get on. <laughs> <laughs> so uh it's <laughs> yeah. It's a manly look, isn't it? Oh, aye. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I Lola's think, like... Lo Lola's like, what are you saying? Right, watch this. Right, watch this. Right, you ready? Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Lola, Lola, go! Come on! Lola, Lola! Take it to daddy. Come on, give me the ball, give me the ball, go. You're showing me up. Pull up. I think you can see your like. There we go. <laughs>